Please forgive any background noise, my brother is home and he likes to stim very loudly. Also my window is open because if it was closed in this heat I would simply wake up in the shadow realm. Today I wanted to talk about some art challenges that I think can really help a good many budding artists while not making it feel like as much of a chore. So many of you may already be aware of this, but there are a lot of art challenges out there on the internet. Some give you themes to work with, others will prompt you to use a particular medium, and some make you focus on certain aspects such as anatomy or inking. All of these challenges are designed to allow you to experiment outside of your comfort zone and engage with something as a community, all while having fun in the process. Heck, a couple of years ago I made my own animation prompts for every month of the year. In addition to being on screen now, I'll be posting it to my Twitter and Discord once this video wraps up. I hardly ever look at it myself because I'm always so busy, but hey, if anyone else wants to try it then please show me what you come up with. I'd love to showcase it on the channel if I can. So today I wanted to look at some challenges that are currently popular and that I personally think are really cool which could help artists to hold their skills in a fun way. We will be looking at five in total and we will be going over the pros and cons for each. If I don't happen to mention one that you think is very popular or is better than another one, please don't fret, I may talk about that one in a future instalment. Because there are obviously so many challenges, I don't see why this can't be made into a series on the channel, so please bear with me. For now, I hope you enjoy the ones I picked out and consider looking into them. I would also just like to mention that even though a lot of these art challenges do have their own rules and guidelines, you do not have to follow them. Everyone has their own limits and lives, so to expect someone to drop everything and commit to posting art for an extended amount of time is a tiny bit ludicrous. Also, a quick PSA, if you're forcing yourself to do something without enjoying it then that's not improvement, that's called a self-inflicted punishment. Just do what you feel comfortable with and above all, have fun. As always, if you like this video, please leave a like and subscribe. So, let's jump in. The first challenge I would like to start off with is extremely relevant to the month that we're in. A lot of these creative challenges will have their own designated month for the community to collectively take part, and this is for a number of reasons. One, it gives people a clear start and finish time. Two, it allows many people to do the challenge simultaneously, which is great for adding to that community spirit. And three, it makes the challenge more memorable for that month and helps it to stand out in people's minds as something to look forward to. I can imagine that quite a few of those challenges sprung to your mind just now, but the one I want to talk about specifically is known as Art Fight. Art Fight is a challenge that takes place every year in July. It has its own website and community discord and primarily focuses on getting participants to draw art of one another's OCs. The way Art Fight works is that you choose one of two teams. The teams receive a different theme each year which also serves as an announcement for people to begin preparations. For example, for 2021, the teams are Steampunk versus Cyberpunk. The aim of Art Fight is to pick characters listed in each members gallery who belong to the opposing team and the amount of effort that gets put into each picture corresponds with how many points the drawing will receive. The team with the most points by the end of July will be crowned the winners. And the best part is that even though the other team didn't get the most points, they still technically win because they get most of the fun out of their characters. A lot of people fall under the assumption that just making art for people doesn't necessarily make it a challenge, but that's actually where I think Art Fight shows its biggest strength. Because of the competitive but friendly aspect, as well as the rewarding nature of raking in points, people end up drawing a lot more and putting more effort into these drawings without necessarily realising, which can help with things such as muscle memory and muscle control, which is something that comes naturally from drawing frequently. And if you are frequently drawing to a certain standard, you are conditioning your brain to maintain that standard afterwards. The great thing that I find about drawing for other people is that you do kind of want to impress them, so you find yourself actively trying harder to make the art look good, which, if you're like me and you know you sometimes just want to slap some black colours onto a sketch, it can come in handy with not letting yourself get into those habits too often. Not that doing art that way is bad, sometimes it's a good de-stressor, but I personally like to try harder on something when I know it's for someone else, you know? So now, this is all well and good, but there are some cons that come with Art Fight as well. The main con, I believe, is the preparation. A lot of people's OCs will develop and change as the creator continues to draw them, so by the time next July rolls around and you still have last year's ref sheet up, it can sometimes be a bit of a mad dash to update and change things before the challenge begins. Another con is that sadly, because of the point system, there will always be that small number of people who try to cheat that system. And when I say cheat, I don't mean in relation to the art itself. I personally don't think it's possible to cheat with art unless you are outright stealing someone's hard work. What I mean by cheating is that there will be that small group of people who will draw a super quick sketch of a bust and then mark it down as a full body painting. Obviously, anyone with eyes will notice when this happens, so if you do see it happening, make sure to report it, because we don't want people being unfair to each other in a fun community event. I understand that it's quite late into July now, this video was supposed to come out on the 20th, but I had to push it back, but that said, there are still a few days left, so please don't take that to mean that you can't join in late to the game. Just create an account, register some characters, and have a team assigned to you, and you can get started. Moving on, another monthly challenge I would like to talk about is Mermaid. Mermaid is a challenge that takes place in May, obviously, and focuses primarily on character design 
with the overall prompt being about mermaids. Who doesn't love mermaids, right? You are free to draw as many mermaid characters as you like, there is no obligation to post every day. You can also choose between creating original mermaid characters or adapting existing characters into mermaid form and vice versa. Mermaid is a really good starter challenge for people who want to learn how to assign certain defining characteristics of a character onto a new body while still making them recognisable. It's especially good for those who have other commitments such as school or work because, as I said before, you can make as little as one drawing to contribute. A lot of people like to use Mermaid as a bit of a stress reliever type challenge because the requirements are so lax, which also helps to avoid burnout, and also allows artists to create their own rules and schedule throughout the month if they wish to. It's honestly really cool to see how creative people can get with this challenge because the prompt is so simple. Create a mermaid. Okay, but does it have to be a conventional pretty girl mermaid, or can it be a monstrous mermaid from the bottom of the ocean? There are also thousands of fish in the sea. Seahorses, jellyfish, sharks, even seals. If it has a tail and lives in the ocean, you can draw it for mermaid. Though even then, to be honest, I've seen people create things like space mermaids, so there really is very little limit to what you can do with the prompt. The cons for mermaid, however, is that because the prompt is just mermaids, it can feel a tiny bit restrictive for those who, say, maybe want to draw a few other fantasy creatures. There's it's only so far that you can stretch the imagination with a single thing, and even though it is impressive to see how imaginative some people can be, it can get a bit repetitive for some. I think this is why people are so taken with the fact that there is no set obligation to complete a certain amount of drawings, even though some people will go ahead and create their own daily prompts to follow anyway, which is completely fine, but yeah. Another con when it comes to mermaid is that unfortunately, due to our culture of prioritising art of conventionally pretty girls, if you were to do a quick google search, that tends to be the majority of the results. A lot of these pretty girls will also usually lack diversity in terms of things like natural skin colour, body types and other factors. This has gotten far better in recent years, but we do still have a bit of a way to go. There is nothing wrong with drawing pretty girls for mermaid, but I would urge people to branch out of your comfort zone of what constitutes as a pretty girl. Pretty comes in all shades, shapes, sizes and genders, and it's very important to remember this in life as well as just in a fun art challenge. This third challenge I wanted to talk about is for my fellow animators out there, and that is reanimated projects. Reanimated projects are a collaborative effort composed of many different artists and animators coming together to reanimate different shots of a piece of media that they enjoy. This media can be anything from a cinematic trailer, an episode of a cartoon, a music video, or even an entire movie. A great example of this is Shrek Retold, where filmmakers of all mediums came together and recreated the first Shrek film in their own distinctive styles. I will put the link for that in the description. It's <laughs> It's a trip. The typical formula for one of these projects is that the organisers will produce a Google Doc with all the necessary information, including contact information, rules and guidelines for members, check-in dates, deadlines, and so on. You will typically apply for these projects via email, and depending on how professional the project is, they may ask for a reel or examples of past work much like an interviewer would. Not all of them do this, so don't worry if you don't have a reel or anything, but it is pretty common, so just look out for that. If you manage to make the cut and get into the project, most of them will have a Discord server that you can engage in and show off your scenes to. You can also ask for advice and critique, and just generally vibe with your fellow animators. I cannot emphasise how crucial these projects have been for helping me not only improve with animating in general, but also how to carve out my own distinctive style of animating instead of just copying a scene in order to break it down and learn how to do it exactly the same. Yeah, I've done that. I'm not proud of it, but I've done it. Effectively, that means I just trace the scene. Not only that, but because of how you apply to them and work together with other animators and organisers, it is extremely good practice for learning how to work in a more professional setting too, should you want to pursue an actual career in the animation industry. I myself have done quite a number of these now, and you can see with each one that instead of just copying the scene, depending on how much wiggle room there is in a shot for you to be creative, the possibilities really are limitless. But with that said, there are some cons. I think the biggest con for these types of challenges is that, well, <laughs> animation is hard. People who do this for a living deserve more credit and respect! If you're someone who likes to whip things out really quickly, then these types of projects may not be for you. For example, I'm currently taking part in the Amphibia Reanimated, Toy Story 2 Reanimated, and the Sailor Moon Hearts in Ice Reanimated. The Sailor Moon shot that you're watching me do the cleans for now has taken me about five months. I joined this project back in February, and that is entirely my fault, I messed up my schedule. Granted, a lot of that time was spent adjusting to things like my job, YouTube and comic work, mental health, and also just having a life, but yeah. If you're quite busy and end up experiencing scheduling issues, then the deadlines can end up becoming a bit stressful should your project fall to the wayside for whatever reason. Luckily though, a lot of these projects will be happy to offer extensions if you need them, depending on the circumstance. Another con is that, depending on the project, they will request to see a reel or a portfolio to make sure that they aren't going to end up with a ton of newer artists slash animators who may just drop out due to sudden pressure. This can be a little bit of an obstacle for those who may not yet have much of a portfolio. 
So the best thing I would recommend is to start out by making some gifts similar to the kinds of shots you would like to see in your favourite media before applying. The organisers will often either let you choose your part or assign one depending on availability, skill level and other factors. So yeah, reanimator challenges are fantastic for budding animators and I would heavily recommend them, but similarly to Art Fight, there can be some prep involved and it can also be a bit high intensity for newbies, so just beware. If you are interested in any of the projects I just mentioned, I'm afraid I can't speak on the availability of two of them, but I know that the Sailor Moon Hearts in Ice project still needs quite a few participants. If you feel like giving it a shot, I will provide the Google Docs of all projects below. The fourth challenge is one that was quite popular on Twitter a few months ago, and that is the Six Fan Arts Challenge. The Six Fan Arts Challenge is exactly what it says on the tin. You draw fan art for six different characters from any media of your choosing. I included this one because I think it's important to share some personal thoughts that I have regarding fan art. A few negative Nancys in the art community seem to be under the impression that drawing fan art is unoriginal, lazy, uninspired, etc, etc, blah 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 blah. I am here to tell you that that is the furthest possible thing from the truth. Art itself is quite literally fan art of the imagination and reality. Everything that we create is based off of something that we have either seen or manifested in our minds. There is no such thing as originality. Also, I've come to find that a lot of the time when people say that fan art has no value, what they're actually saying is that they don't want people engaging in interests that they don't believe are worthy of expression. The best example of this I can give is when some random comic book incel talks highly about Marvel or DC and then just completely trash on shoujo manga. People will always hate a piece of media for no reason and try to deter you from enjoying it yourself due to some weird sense of egocentrism. If you enjoy something, just engage in it however much you want and just tell them to f*** off. Mini rant over, I think that the Six Fan Art Challenge is a great way to get yourself into the mindset of drawing multiple characters on the same page, which surprisingly from experience is kind of hard and people don't really talk about it much. You can either keep them separate or oftentimes a lot of artists will have the characters interacting beyond their designated panels. If you're someone who struggles to draw multiple characters, this challenge can be really handy in terms of dipping your toes into that aspect without fully committing. Or you can just draw the characters on their own and put your focus into translating them into your own distinct style as was originally in Intended. The tidbit that I'm talking about here is just something that the community seems to have collectively agreed on. It's not strictly necessary. Fan art again, similar to Art Fight, is extremely good for training up that muscle memory and control. It also helps you to pick out what it is that makes those characters recognisable and applying it to your own works. You may not be necessarily thinking of these things when you're doing them, again, but the good thing about these benefits is that they are mostly subconscious. The main conscious thing you need to do is just draw. Now for the cons. One of the biggest arguments I've seen against the Six Fan Arts Challenge is that a lot of the time, people will use this challenge as a means of drawing in fans using popular characters that people are currently into. And I don't really see this as a con, I'm just gonna say right now. While yes, some people do this, it's not a bad thing for people to want to do it, no matter how much people will try to convince you it is. In recent years, I've come to find terms like clout chasing to be such non-problems that you really shouldn't be concerned about them unless you are using or harming other people in the process. But what I will say is that if you're only doing it for the sake of using those characters to gain a following, those people who follow you aren't going to care about anything else that you post. So in the long run, it just really doesn't help. Help you. That's one of the unfortunate factors of drawing fan art. And if you're not putting much effort into it and are only focused on who you're drawing instead of how you're drawing, then you aren't going to improve as quickly as you may want to. The devil is in the details. If you want to draw fan art to gain clout, then that's completely fine, but try to make it worth your while, okay? And the final challenge I want to highlight is the character age meme. Effectively, this meme consists of a template with varying ages listed and the artist has to illustrate what their characters would look like. This meme is absolutely fantastic for not only fleshing out a character's timeline, but also helping the artist to break out of what I like to call babyface syndrome, which is where no matter how old a character is supposed to be, they always appear to be portrayed as looking very young. This is also a very big problem in places like anime, without even touching on the more skeevy implications of it, and even Hollywood blockbusters seem to have a bigger version to older looking characters. I'm also guilty of this, so please don't take this as me being preachy, but I do think most if not every artist can benefit from doing this challenge and it should be something that we need to try to do more of. I understand that some reasons a lot of artists don't want to draw all the characters is because they want to draw people their age, they want to draw people they find conventionally attractive, drawing characters with less defined features like wrinkles is just easier, and a variety of other things, but again, it is very good practice to try and incorporate characters of all ages into your repertoire. And plus, old doesn't equal ugly and we need to pack that in. Your future self will thank you. And my biggest con for this meme is that I see a lot of variations for it, and a large chunk of them stop in the mid-twenties, which again, reinforces that subconscious ageism that we all don't 
don't realize that we are perpetuating. It was actually pretty difficult for me to find a variation of this meme that went further than 30 years old, so I have actually created one because it kind of bugged me that this is such a prevalent issue for no reason, so feel free to download that from the Google Doc link below. Another con I see with this meme is that a lot of people don't seem to understand that as you get older, your clothing, your weight, how you style your hair, and even your personality will change, not just how tall or how many wrinkles you have. So if you do happen to attempt this challenge, try to think of all these points as well in order to fully flesh out your character's timeline. Again, I think that this meme suffers from the overwhelming enforcement from pop culture that being young and attractive is the norm, and that is exactly why we need to create characters that go against that grain. Otherwise, we're just going to continue to have people who think that you just stop existing after you hit 20. And that, I believe, is everything. Despite what I have said here, the main point of these challenges is to have fun and enjoy drawing. If for whatever reason you start a challenge and decide either you don't like it or it's stressing you out, then it is okay to shelve it. No one's going to jump out of the screen and force you to keep going. But I do hope that you take what I've shared here on board and consider taking part in some of these in the future. Thank you so much for watching. Again, if you like this video, then please leave a like and subscribe, and I will speak to you soon. Stay safe, everyone. Bye!